want to rise above what holds you back? These are the stories of those fighting that battle. It might also be the story of you. I'm Dan Waldschmidt, author of Edgy Conversations and strategist of billion dollar companies all over the world. This is Mark Menard, author of The Story of You, the guy who knows a thing or two about never giving up. You're listening to Elevating Beyond. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Elevating Beyond with a two-word mission statement, Change Lives. And look, it's always about sharing the story behind the story of what it really takes to go through the struggle to achieve significant success. And speaking of significant, I am here right now with the one and only Nate Peterman. And before we get more into what Nate's doing, and Nate, you're only 22 now. Yep. I'll give you a chance to say what's up in a second. Yeah. Um, you're not allowed to talk yet. No, I'm just joking. But uh, <laughs> what was I talking about? No. Um, Nate and I met when he was only 17 years old, which is amazing. He was still in high school. This, and we're going to talk more about all this. I met you through after Eric Thomas spoke at my company. I got around him more doing stuff, and then I saw you in his uh, BU group. Yep. And they had me guest in there for a month, actually. Like, they were doing something. He came to my company and spoke, and then uh, as a business owner and stuff, too, they're like, can we let, you can jump in for a month. And I was able to check it out and connect with some awesome people. I love that you're only 17 and already paying to learn, doing stuff. I just couldn't believe it. And we've stayed in touch. And now, not only are you here in studio, your car is packed up. You're on your way out to LA. And we're going to share all of how that came about. But first of all, how are you doing, my good man? I'm doing great, brother. I appreciate you uh, having me here at your uh, the studio. Definitely blessed and grateful. And yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited to get to, to LA, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure you have a little bit of a drive ahead of you. But uh, it's an honor. And and so over the years, and and this is what I love about the show, like the variety of guests. Um, even like next week, for for Ken, you're welcome double promo but next week's guest Ken Coleman of uh, author of the proximity principle who he runs all of Dave Ramsey's stuff and so much more but the reason I'm bringing his book up is the proximity principle gets so into investing and getting the right people in your life at different levels which kind of leads us to what you're doing out in LA but even at age 17, before we get into some of the different parts of your journey and your jobs and what led you to the business that you have now, what at age 17, for, for everyone listening, because I know where I was at age 17, made it different for you compared to everyone else around you that's out partying, that's out doing all to say I'm going to be investing and being involved in a group like it was basically at that time almost like a mastermind group that Eric Thomas had um, if people watching don't know who Eric Thomas is he was on like seven shows ago with his amazing mom and speaker around the world just look him up E.T. the hip hop preacher just one of the biggest speakers in the world now like literally super great but at age 17 you're involved in that group you're paying money that's it's not cheap mm -mm. that would be the cost of like college classes and a lot of people would be like that's a car payment so like how just explain that like what where did that come from was that all your own initiative was that from parenting mm -hmm. like what brought you there at that age yeah for sure so you know, with me being 17 years old and investing into a personal development university, that wasn't something ideal, especially being where I'm from, I like to call it, you know, Amish or Mennoniteville, you know, because every single day. That's Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, right? Right around there, yep. Originally from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. 
Oh, that's even further out. Oh yeah, yeah, it's more uh, in the neck of the woods. <laughs> but uh, literally every single day, you know, Passion, Mennonites and Amish, and it's, it's crazy. So being from a small town where I'm from and nobody really, you know, makes a name for themselves. You know, people either live there, they're retired, they work warehouse jobs, um, or they're, you know, working at, at like a gas station or something, or they're going to college and they just come back and they're not doing anything. Huh. Very uh, progressing with their life. So uh, whenever I was actually around 15, 16 years old, that was a big monumental uh, moment in my life, Mark, because that was the year that my parents got divorced. Oh. And for me, that was tough because gotcha. growing up, you know, you have a lot of kids, you know, if their parents got divorced, it was like in elementary school or That's in like tough. middle school. It's ne I couldn't, it's never could be easy ever. But that's, you're already dealing with so much transitional high school and all that. And then that, the parents getting a divorce. Yeah. So was, was there a lot of fighting going on prior to, the, was it built up for a while? Like, did you see it coming? Were, were you, a lot of stuff, you, you know what I mean? Sometimes people will be caught, kids or you see what you see, you know what you know, did you, have any idea or like that it was coming or honestly I never it like the reason it was so hard for me is because I never thought it would happen you gotcha. know like I always thought because again I had friends that their parents were divorced and I was like wow that that's crazy like there's no way that could happen you know? yeah hey. yeah but then it happened and I mean there was times where you know there was arguments I mean nothing and every marriage has Believe me, 13 oh, years, every marriage has that. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like <laughs> one of those things where, you know, you hear a story of, yeah, you know, somebody was beating somebody else, like nothing like yeah, that yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if my, uh, if, if my parents saw each other today, I mean, they, of course, acknowledge each other. It's yeah. not one of those things where it's like, you know, who's her, or who's he anymore, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But uh, again, that was a big monumental point in my life because I was so, I, mean, I was 15, 16 years yeah, old. Yeah, that's know? crushing. And, and going through that whenever I'm in high school, it's so tough. how did how do they tell, was it like, did they tell you, okay, we're gonna be getting a divorce? And did, did were you involved in like, who you stay with, when, where, in that process? Or was it kind of like, you'll be with mom this amount? Like, how did that get presented to you? That's, that's a good question, Mark. Um, it's whenever I, because I was staying at my, my mother's place and, and my dad, very respectful man, um, he's, he's very independent, mm -hmm. so he had no problem with, you know, going to get his own apartment, you yeah. know, and things like that. So, of course, with me still being in school at the time, um, in, in financial situations with my mother being in a better place, yeah. compared to my dad leaving and pretty much just you know, not having much to work with. Yeah. You know? um, having two jobs, you know, mother and father uh, over the years, you know, it took care of, of decent things. You know, I didn't come from like a high class or, you know, rich family. I came from like a normal middle class family. Yeah. So whenever they split, my dad kind of got into a hole. Yes. And, and my mom, who I stayed with, was in a better position. And okay. Uh, they did tell me like, hey, you know, things are, things are pretty much gonna, and everything my dad was more so the the one that told me that mm. and uh, it, it was tough you know it, it's still tough uh, you know sometimes thinking about it but yeah I realized at a young age mark that with me going through that at that age it led me to somebody like Eric Thomas oh ET, you know so you started like watching his stuff on probably YouTube exactly yeah that's you, cool. Yeah, you're down in the dumps some days, you know. You're, yes. you're just, you don't know where to go to. Most people they go to drugs, smoking weed. Um, you know, they'll they'll go to Little Debbie eating junk food and yeah, all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like me. I I went to motivation. Oh, that's cool. You know, like I went straight up YouTube motivational video. One of the first ones that popped up, Giovanni Rapin. Yes, you know? I've had him on the show. Exactly. So. Was, if you guys haven't seen, just so you know, if you haven't seen that, I mean, just just go to YouTube, type in Eric Thomas Giovanni or Eric Thomas the Guru story, probably anything. That's the first one I saw. It, I mean, now it has probably like a hundred million plus downloads, at least. Yeah, it's up there. Definitely. But it's it's still cool, and that was so that there's a whole that'd be a whole other show, but just the story behind the story of how they. 
did that, but people think that just overnight, it's just so, but so you watch that, which that was the first one yep. that I, someone showed me that when I was at Entree Leadership and I had never really watched a motivational, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is freaking cool. Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the speaker I thought, Mark, was Giovanni. <laughs> yeah, because you can't see Eric Thomas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Giovanni's all ripped and working out, <laughs> right. and then you hear that, and it's just like with the it was all so cool. And then I'm just like, what? And then I found out, yeah. like, is there, then I, the first time I saw, I remember I went through and I was like, I'm watching every, every freaking, then I heard about his TG, I am, thank yep. God it's, and I'm, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it that's, inspiring. I love to, I think that's so powerful to know that that was something that helped you mm-hmm. at a phase in your life because like you know when he's going through his struggles and i know he knows you now and now you're connected even more but him like no that's that what literally was his why to to be doing that before he was getting paid a hundred thousand to speak he put thousands of we all know that but so you started watching those yep yeah i started watching those and i guess just to kind of go off off of that mark the the main thing that really i think stood out to me the most it wasn't you know et didn't eric thomas didn't just start a university and i got in years later i was one of the first ones in breathe university oh so whenever i got in there was like 15 members okay so today there's like i think three four thousand maybe i don't probably yeah i wouldn't be surprised like it's grown and it's probably not i mean he's had to build a business over I remember when we met there's so many levels to a business I had built more of a business over time than he had mm-hmm. but he had built so much as a public figure was cr- the way God works I was he was needing to learn more about that and I was needing to, to learn more about the other side of it and we connected more there too wow. but you got but you, when you got in but still you're 17 and it's it's not free no. and then did you pitch it? So then you found out they had like a class like that you could join. So did you have a job or did you talk to mom like, hey, this is something yeah. I want to be a part of? <laughs> like, how did that go? Because I would imagine a parent be like, what, 300 bucks? I don't know what the cost was at that time. Absolutely. And like 200 bucks a month, 300, whatever it was. No, you had it right there, $300 a month. Like, and, and that's the thing. This is the stuff that people don't hear about is is he investing that personally like I've done. At 17. 17 years old, I was working at McDonald's. Yeah, and, and to be honest, like, uh, the amount of time I worked in like two weeks, I made anywhere from like, you know, 250, 300 on, you know, a good two weeks. If even after tax. Exactly. I was, first be, job was at Taco Bell, yeah. yeah. This was being in school too. Yeah, So yeah. I'm over here like, and I didn't, you know, I, I graduated, of course, I was like a BC student, but um, you know, this is me investing like a single paycheck every single month into a course, an online university. So you paid for it? I paid for it. Oh man, I love that. I've had no help with, with what we're going to talk about here today, I've had no help with. No help. And, and I want to make that clear because I feel as if whenever somebody sees somebody that's that. younger uh, growing up and, and they're like 22, 20, even late teens and there's, you know, they're successful at least to a point uh a lot of people assume that they've been helped by mommy and daddy and that's not always the you know the the thing if that makes sense well it not always it makes sense it removes the freaking excuses yeah which people need to hear at any level that they're at is it's really how bad do you want it do what it takes with what you have you're 17 you're in high school putting everything into it every possible thing that could be some a lot of spending money there could have been so much you wanted to do you're investing it all it doesn't happen by quint there's no three million plus listeners downloads 180 or 100 and plus thousand just from the last show over 12 days just on itunes i'm very picky about people that i have in the studio and there's a reason why you're sitting here right now and and it starts off by you're only 22 and it's not about i don't care if people the faint and it's like 
you started investing and working your butt off at age 17 and paying your way to start doing something that most people you can't really even explain it to in, in, in your probably whole city Not at and all. most and they'd be like what why aren't you putting that in a college savings why aren't you but you you still kept doing it so so then where does that take you like you gra let's let's move forward to now you're graduating yeah. and and d did did also that help you connect with some other people like even during that times of the divorce did you feel that you got closer to other people there first or did you have like close friends in high school still too that you felt like you could connect with I'm just out of my own curiosity yeah absolutely um, I could never connect with anybody at deep in, in high school whatsoever. really absolutely nobody really I got, the, the first book I picked up was you have it on your bookshelf uh, ET's uh, secret to success mm. and then greatness is upon you the journal and I kid you not, Mark, I used to take that to school with me every single day. Wow. And with me taking that every single day, I had kids come up to me and, and they're like, what's this? I was like, it's, it's Eric Thomas motivational book, uh, teaches you how, you know, how to be successful, all this other great stuff. And they're like, why are you reading this? I'm like, because I, I want to succeed in life. And, and, and this was like the, the jocks in school. Yeah, Cause I even used I, I used to do some videos back in the day too, 16, 17 years old, and I, I got criticized so much not just from the videos that I made because it was different, but just because I was bringing that stuff because nobody believed in that. You know, I'm so happy you shared that because, and we'll have all your links on here to the the book that you have coming out, to the business that you run into, social media, to to Instagram where you've yeah. grown a huge platform. And that's really engaged too. Like before I was even on there, I was seeing stuff that you were doing and stuff. And it takes guts to already be established and get on stuff. I know people that have asked me that have Fortune 500 companies that are terrified to do, uh, everyone goes to that of doing a video or a clip and want it to be in high school where you're already it's like so amplified of what's everyone and to start getting on there and I encourage more people to not let that stop them either because you still got on there and you started doing something absolutely you started and it's like okay that could have been I got criticized but the more you do it kind of starts to then become yeah more normal right would you, would you say yeah, and, and to address your question, Mark. Oh yeah, I've got to ask a question. After <laughs> <laughs> now you go. And after uh, after I graduated uh, high school, um, this you know this is a bold move that I did. I because I didn't hang around like a whole lot of people. Yeah, I was more so the kid in school. I was like more so towards the back of the class uh, classroom. I didn't ask questions. Uh, I was very shy even grown up, very introverted. Yes. Right. Yeah. And um, even going through school, you know, these people criticizing me. Uh, once I graduated, I, I cut all my friends off. Yeah. The people that were friends. Yeah. And it's crazy because here's the thing. I was going through the, the system and the people that I used to hang around, I realized through like my junior and senior year, like these guys aren't on the same wavelength. But I had to kind of, um, cause I didn't just want to, you know, cause problems in school. Yeah. It, it's almost like there, there's seasons yeah. for, for everything. And it's almost, it's almost different levels of adaptability and surviving. Absolutely. And it's like, I have to, it, it's, and, and then when, when people say this, like about cutting people out and all that, some people, I, I don't. They can take that the wrong way and think it means, oh, I'm successful and I'm better than it. It's not true. It's you've got to realize people that aren't support, like you're supporting them and they're supporting you. And you have similar, like, it can be totally different journeys, but like similar mindsets. Then it, that's a, a relationship that goes both ways where they're like, 
I get you're doing the video stuff. That's cool. It's keep, keep pushing that. That's who you are. Like, that's a then that would be someone, and they may be doing something different, but you could still connect. But other people that it's like, not only do you not relate to them, but a lot of what you're doing would actually be like dragging you away from where you want to go. So it's almost like that. Just to, I just, I know it's said all the time, but I always like to help like break that down to people to understand. Because you could have some people that you are connected with that are on the same mission or something, but if you and I had to cut them out of my life after jail and stuff too, absolutely. That were like, you're gonna go to call, like you sell out. You're gonna, you think you're better. So it's like, you gotta do. But it's not always as easy. But you realized, okay, at this young of an age, it's, I gotta start. It's not worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, most people went to college after high school. Yeah. I went to my first ever ET conference after high school. Yes. You know, which, so which isn't free either. No. You got to travel and you got to pay. I drove eight hours um, with a buddy of mine I've known since second grade, and he's he's not even into that stuff. But I just really? went to live with somebody uh, driving to Hartford, Connecticut, from Pennsylvania. It was like an eight-hour drive, and. Uh, I didn't even sleep that the night before because I was just so excited. I'm going to see ET, ET, ET. And I went to that conference and um, I, I didn't start BU until after that conference. That's when I committed. Gotcha. And at the time I was working at McDonald's. And after I left that conference, I quit McDonald's. The day after. Really? I quit McDonald's and I enrolled in Breathe University. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm working at McDonald's. I mean, come on. Like, it was paying the bills and everything. And, and no disrespect for people that do work there, but well, no, but there's. See, yeah. I, I I worked at Taco Bell where I never knew. I, do what you have to do to get where you need to go, but don't let it keep you there, for forever. It's like you realize, okay, I've done, I've got enough, I can do more now. Exactly. But also, never think that you're. I, some people think with this mindset, I should immediately have an upper level. It's like no, you shouldn't. You should actually work a bunch of crappy jobs and keep finding better ones That's and work so your butt off while you're there right but but I get it that got you to think I I'm done this enough I'm around more I can be doing something else Absolutely. but then how but then you had to pay for were, I just have enough, were you the youngest person there at that conference oh absolutely yeah like by probably by far I bet a lot of people when they're 30s and stuff absolutely I was, did they notice yeah. that was it it was probably smaller yeah. Was E.T. and C.J. stuff there? Were they like, dude, I bet they love, I bet they were impressed. Right, I mean, the first conference, you know, I didn't have like that personal connection with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the second conference, and once I was in Greek University, because uh, again, with me being the youngest, for content purposes, they wanted to get that, right? Like, oh. <laughs> Nate the Great, Nate the Young Cub. They're like, we need, uh, we need a white guy to fit our, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We got to get the white demographic. Right. E.T., you know I'm joking. <laughs> it's true. It's true. No, yeah, it's true. no, but I was... But no, like, no, no, I get it. Yeah. But they did. It, it is, though, because... But in all honesty, when you're doing... and so I interrupt all the time. I know you know that. <laughs> no, you're good. But you make good points. It makes me think of the bigger picture. In all honesty, it's smart to tar target that because think how many other literally 0.5% of the people that are in there at that age that don't know about something like that, mm. that it's really going to help. So it's like if we could get them to understand that someone like Nate is doing this at this age, there could be other kids out there that don't have a clue. So it's being done for the, for the right marketing reasons, of course, also. Absolutely. But you mentioned the next word, which is key relationships yeah because there's one thing to go and see and watch the videos and be like a fan and, and absor which is great but then there's another level of starting to build those relationships mm. and and so what how did you get from there to then start building the relationships that's a great question so with me going to another one of ease events uh, I was in Arizona, actually. Okay. And, of course, <clears throat> I wasn't... I mean, that was my first time on the West Coast. Oh, wow. So, my mom came with me. Really? Yeah, my mom came with me. That's cool. Which was cool. The, the cool part. So, uh, we're out there, you know, in the desert. 